the leaders in this part of the brief i'm going to be showing you how to make uh, a virtual art gallery using my friend's artwork uh, digital tv to actually make this kind of gallery come to life Tisetu is a Didima artist so we're gonna be making this gallery uh, for Tisetu to actually come to life so without further waste of time let's get it uh leaders hope you guys are good welcome to the brief a new segment that we will upload weekly on fridays the idea behind the brief it's basically showcasing some of the project that we do here at season attack and also i mean taking project briefs that are in public and we try to build um, on Friday try to show you how to do it so the benefit for you if you are a beginning developer watching our videos you're gonna benefit from learning on how to actually uh, develop the projects um, I mean you're gonna learn about how to set up a virtual reality experience you're gonna learn about how to set up an augmented reality experience so that's a benefit for you if you're a beginner but if you are a company that happened to come across our profile here in youtube the benefit for you is to see how we think about uh, our stuff that we are building it um that will build build it for you you know we are a prospective uh, service provider to actually assist you to bring your ideas to life so I think it's quite important probably can look through this catalog and see what you do you actually like you know so that next time when you call me like hey super malome hey Paso, you see that one that project that you did I really like it you know so that's the whole idea of the brief so weekly on friday we will share the projects that we are doing here or project that we would like to do and on sundays you know it's um it's the worlds out of this world where we showcase virtual worlds that we actually liked from the uh unity asset store so ladies and gentlemen banyana boys and girls let's get started so the brief of today it's basically simple so what we're gonna do today we're gonna go to chris in tombi you know this is for by now i'm sure some of you have watched my past videos talking about my friend this is who is called uh, chris in tombi <laughs> yeah so the idea for us is to we have done museums in the past uh with Diseto. um some of them we've done for monaverse so i wanted to start this um activity where we are building another gallery not museum but we are building another gallery actually what's the difference between a museum and a gallery if you know the difference please drop your answer below in the comments so we're gonna be building a sample gallery for him and i've already find out an asset that i usually like it's clean it's minimal that we're gonna use let me extract it that we're gonna use to build this gallery for him and and then yeah so the whole process for you guys you're gonna be able to see how do we how to actually set up virtual reality and stuff like that so yeah just want to show you this guys i just want to show you this let me show you what we're gonna use yeah sketchfab.com sketchfab.com and go for look for models sometimes you don't really have to start everything from scratch you could just find what it's already there and use it you know so this is what i'm gonna use uh, for me to develop this project right that's what does our building so we're gonna have to bring it into our vr setup and we can be able to 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 start building a uh, crescent tombi scalary 
So without any further waste of time, let's get started. So the first thing, we are using Unity here, guys. No Unreal, no Godot, guys. Ah, those things, Unreal is beautiful. Godot is lightweight. I like them. But here we're using Unity. First love. Very committed. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a new project. And let me see what do I have here. I'm going to use, I usually use 2022.3. But there is other versions that you can choose that are available for you to be able to use. So for this project, we're going to use um, a universal render pipeline. Uh, which is part of the, the Unity S3 pipelines as a built-in uh, pipeline. The one that you see first here is the built-in render pipeline. And there is a universal render pipeline and there is a high-definition render pipeline. You're probably going to see high-definition render pipeline mostly on the videos that we will be uploading on Sunday. So the built-in render pipeline is the oldest uh, pipeline for Unity. So they've started working on other scriptable uh, render pipeline. Um, the universal uh, becomes the one now, the go-to standard, especially if you are building virtual reality, augmented reality, you would actually want to be using universal. So high definition render pipeline, you'll see, I don't want to spoil it for you, but this I'm telling you is the highest quality of the most like it's photorealistic it's so beautiful but you see when we, we we do stuff on sundays and all this kind of stuff you know so let's choose this one universal 3d uh core you could you also have two options that you can choose the one that comes with the sample but we don't need the sample uh, we are too fresh we are creating ourselves a sample here yeah. So we don't need that sample. So now let's give it a name that we want. Gogo, Grace, Ntombi, uh, Gallery. And then right, we choose where we're going to save it. Let's find where we're going to save it. I'm going to put it here in Made in Sisanda. So Made in Sisanda is usually um other people that i make projects for so i put the stamp of made in sisanda inspired by made in china <laughs> i know that's smart right <laughs> do you need to uh, now nah, we don't need uh unity cloud for this one unity cloud means like to have access of of your projects on the cloud that you could always find it when you need it but for this one we really don't uh, need that so then we can disconnect and say uh, choose your organization mine it's sisanda tag so we have chosen that one then we can create a project it might take a little bit of while for it to actually load so this is a part that i will stop part two, chapter one of this tutorial and come back when it has loaded you know it may take time my month to Mansu it's, it's her own person usually likes to delay so I'm gonna stop this video here and then we pick it up on the second time when it is open this is the first chapter please do subscribe leaders after 265 days 675 hours and 2 minutes and 250 we finally made it to unity you know as I've told you that uh, Mansu is very specific. She takes her own time. So we really had to wait for her to finish loading Unity. I know the Godot people were like, yeah, that could have done so fast. I'm like, yeah, okay. I know that could have been fast, right? But we are here. Commitment is commitment. <laughs> so, yeah. Without further waste of time, let's get started. So the first thing that you do when you're setting up a virtual reality project, you need to be able to connect to your headsets. You need to be able to, um, you need to be able to allow the software to understand that you are moving your head, uh, for the software to also understand that you are moving your hands. And eventually from there, we're gonna start building up 
where you can now start to move in a 3D space and doing all this kind of stuff. So what you do, you come to, actually there is a couple of ways uh, for one to actually do this. One of the way it's using, um, there is two software development kit. Uh, one software development kit is called, I'm gonna show you to you now. Let's go here. If you are a building an experience for only Meta, then you can use this uh, Meta XR stuff. So if you are only building an experiences for Meta, you can be using that to actually build your, your projects for Meta. So like your Quest 3, Quest 2, Quest 1, no, no more Quest 1, but Quest Pro, you can be using this. But for people who wants to uh, build content that goes to other headsets beyond Meta, because we still have HTC Vive, we still have to, we still have uh, a lot of other headsets beyond uh, Meta. Now there is, um, what's that, the Apple Vision Pro. So now there is a lot of these headsets. So usually the trick is always to use uh, XR integration. No, 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 I'm lying. It's usually to use Open XR using. Um, it's usually to use the open standard uh, called Open XR, which is open source. Uh, it means now you can build once your source code and you can distribute it in multiple devices. So let's say we are going to distribute our projects into multiple devices. So we firstly going to need to set up or install what you call an open XR. Then afterwards, then we install what we call XR tool kit, which interaction tool kit, which is going to allow us to interact easily. Guys, Fiori doesn't pay the bills. Practicality is the one that pays the bills by Steve Compella. So let's get started. Uh, you come to Package Manager, and then when you are in Package Manager, you must go to Unity Registry, Unity Registry, and look for for Open XR plugin. Please install it. You'll hear your computer will start to breathe, you know, because it's working now. It's so excited that finally you are giving a chance to work. So you start to breathe and do all this kind of stuff, you know. So we are waiting for it. Hopefully it will finish soon. And usually when you install this, it may ask you that you give it some time to restart because it's going to be using a different kind of input system, which is a new action input system. So what we're going to do, we're going to restart it all right we're gonna restart it ah it's not restarting ah it's supposed to restart so we're gonna have to wait wait for you to put back again so i guess we'll have to pause it here and wait for it until it's loaded but usually when you do when it reboots, like if it has already loaded, because it's not creating this folder, what usually takes time is if we go to our files under Sisanda Tech, Made in Sisanda, Co So, usually for the first time when you open a project, it's creating this library file. So, creation of that library file is usually the one that takes time. But once your project has opened, it usually doesn't take time, especially if you don't have many things happening inside. So you see, we are back. We didn't have to pause, but we are back inside and we're ready to work and roll. Let's do that. Let's do that. So we have installed XR plugin. Now you're going to see now we have, uh, when we go, about, so don't cheat the people. We're going to now have to go to edit project settings. And then once we are there, we could look for XR plugin management, right? So on this XR plugin management, this is what allows us to tell this project to say, we are 
activating this software development kit so that it can work with these headsets. So they already give you Oculus, the one that I showed you for Meta. So if you want to use that Meta one, you're going to have to click there for that plugin. But we're going to use the plugin called OpenXR. So you have to make sure that under Windows, you activate it, right? You see now there is, um, what's that? There is a, there's a warning sign. We can click that warning sign. It will tell you that you need to do this. And you need to at least add one profile and all this kind of stuff. So we're going to come here at open XR. You click it and then you can all add all of them. If you want all of them, you could somehow add all of them. Let's add five index. So that this profile means it's settings that you would need uh, to make sure that when you, whatever that you do, when it gets to the next headset, it's able to work with those headsets without any challenges. You're already setting it up for, for that thing, you know? Um, Vive controller, this is special for headsets, like the button that we're gonna set here. The, the way our buttons work or the way our controls are gonna work, it's gonna still be the same when it gets to the next headset, you understand? So HP Revive, HTC Vive, Microsoft. I mean, we can add all of them for the sake. For the sake, we are not doing eye gaze. We are not doing eye gaze interaction. We are not doing hand interaction. So those one we don't have to do. So those it's when you are trying to move stuff with your eyes. <laughs> when you're trying to do that. So then you can add that. So now we have to move into Android. Android is for the standalone headsets. Uh, from 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 Meta, uh, the Quest Three they fall under Android. They are Android based, so we can click here, open XR. Same problem. So let's go and fix all those problems. Let's go and fix open XR. So this one is easy because it has few profiles. We only need a Meta Quest Pro and an Oculus Touch, and then we can just tick here that we want uh meta quest support let's see what does this thing it will now tell us there's another setting that we don't like on your project please remove that because it's not you know like because these things are uh mobile devices in a way they are, don't have enough power so usually meta would complain about i mean you need to complain about stuff like screen space ambient occlusion which are usually used if you are building a pc based virtual reality or if you are building a pc game because of the power of the pc you can use those ones so we can just press fix and do all those kind of stuff or we could later come to it and do that because most of the time will be in under the pc was it the pc area stuff because of, i'm gonna be testing it on the pc so that one is done but now we need a way for us to interact, to, 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 to be able to grab or to be able to move around. And how do we get to do that? Are uh, you yeah, loading? Please don't crash. Please don't crash, thanks. So how are we going to do that? We're going to come to Package Manager and then we're going to look for what you call XR Interaction Toolkit. Just for you, for me to read for you, they say it's a high-level component-based interaction system for creating vr and ar experiences Mahoa. we already know what does interaction mean interaction mean yeah interactive opambala opambili pambela you know it's a matter of interaction but it's basically creeping be able to move be able to click user interface and all those kind of stuff be able to understand the input that the user provide so we need this file to be able to understand that so you can click install so it's gonna take some small time for you to install it's done it has already installed right then what we're gonna need after here it's a um, i made a backup <laughs> lying 
but make sure you make backups guys because you don't want to destroy your project and then you have to start from scratch and the client is on you hey chief we're waiting for our project to be submitted you've said that this project will be submitted by friday on the brief but you didn't back it up you know so sometimes you must really back it up your file so we're gonna come to samples we need starter assets as i always said guys certain things you don't have to create them from scratch if you find something that is already working that can make your work fast please just do that import that file right so we have imported every file that we named uh into the project so now in the next chapter we're going to be setting it up all together to make sure that it works so we're going to Stop this and we go to the next chapter. Ah, Sad Kubeka leaders, Sad Kubeka, we are progressing, we are doing it very, very, very nicely. So let's get started. Let's start setting up stuff to make sure that stuff actually work. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna come here at project settings. I'm trying to learn <laughs> the best, the simplest way. Or the conventional way that anybody can do it because for me i usually come to build settings then i can from build settings then i can be able to go to player settings you know but usually the best way is to come to edit we are going to project settings so here i uh, my man you can write no you are not publishing but anyway we are already here you can write Sisanda Tech, Coco Christine Tombis Gallery, but we are not coming here. We are going to the site of quality. So now we need to understand that when you download a universal render pipeline, it usually comes at a high fidelity quality, meaning that your project is going to be so good and realistic. Uh, a photogly, photorealism probably can achieve it while it's on sitting on high fidelity, you know. So it's going to use a lot of power needed. But this is good if we are only doing it for PC. But because of you guys might not even do it for PC, you might be doing for Quest 3. So now I will need to show you another format that we must set it up that we're going to use. So that format is called Balanced. Because you see now the green one, it has selected Android and the oh if we are doing apple vision pro we are going to make sure that it has also selected ios but we are not doing that so we have to make sure that we select balanced right and then once you have select balanced we can also come here to graphics and make sure that the whole uh settings are set to urp balanced right continue please my leader so once we have done that we know that in terms of performance uh our wait leadership yeah we know that in terms of performance our experience is going to be able to run on quest 3 or quest 2 or quest pro as a standalone without it being connected to the pc so let's set up our experience so the first thing that we're gonna do is to delete this camera we delete this camera we don't need it usually if you are doing if you are doing only quest 3 you don't need post processing uh because post processing can be costly so this one we're gonna minimize so post processing is to add last detailed stuff that makes the experience to look really beautiful so that we are gonna close so now what we need we need to come to xr right and look for xr origin here so xr origin let's put it on top and xr uh interaction manager let's put them there on top so xr origin this is basically a script that allows you to that controls the entire virtual reality experience so it firstly understand that it needs to uh, be able to get your camera so your camera main camera it's set here you understand it's already set within here and the camera offset is basically measuring how far do you move off with the camera to always maintain that view that you will be able to see you understand so usually drinking mode origin mode i usually started from the floor 
so that it can assume your height if you are sitting it can be able to assume all those kind of heights you understand so now we got our camera mode set here let me quickly let me quickly set up my headsets on let me plug them into the pc so that we can be able to test as we are building if this thing is working we don't have to pause for this one I just wanna do quicker checks. Alright, so I just plugged a cable to my PC and then I plug it to my headsets. I'm using Quest 3 headsets. Um they are sitting on my table. They are always busy. They are always busy. You know, they have these stripes on tops. Those straps were white and now those straps I don't know their color anymore because I'm always busy here operating with these headsets. You see leaders, when you buy these things, they must not come and decorate and be nice for your Instagram post where you can be busy sharing there. Uh, look at my office. No, 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 no. They must do the real work. And the real work is to work, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. They must do the real work of working. So I'm almost there. I'm just sitting up here. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yes. Cool. We good now. So now we are connecting between the two. We have set uh, XR origin from the floor, and we wanna see if it's ready. Let's check. So I'm gonna make sure that this clean it's maximized so that you guys can see the full view and when i press play you should be able to see my head moving right you should be able to see my head moving right yeah now we good we can drag our head i mean other experiences they could just end here uh you don't have to do many things this is what you call a fifth degree of freedom uh drilled off so you can just keep your experience here people they don't have to walk they don't have to move around the walls and all this kind of stuff you know so you could just end here but as in our case we don't need that we want where people are able to move their hands they're able to walk and do all this kind of stuff so what we're gonna do next is to activate such so we got our head moving so let's set up other stuff that i needed uh for our experience to actually make sense we're gonna come to remember we downloaded that sample starter kit so, so that sample starter kit it already comes with stuff that are already created that we can use to configure to set up uh our project quick and charts without us uh, waiting and waiting for Godot to come, but we could eventually get the stuff done right away, you know. So one of those things, we need to feel this thing here. Yeah, for us to be able to see our hands, we need to feel all these values here. Likely from that project, it's already set, so you can come to uh, XR default controller. So these are the settings that will tell the headset what to do exactly when you are using it you know so let me check if i got my batteries on the other one yeah we got both batteries so now we've already connected the left side with the settings we're gonna come to the right side and connect the right side with the settings and then receiving this project then let's play our project. You start to see now we have this red light that goes good, 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 good. So that can actually show you that we've already uh we are able to set it up our right hand. Let's see if the left hand will come. I wonder if this headset, yeah. Then we have our left hand going up and down as well. So both our hands can be able to track. Maybe let me put it, the headset fully on my head. 
So when I do that, uh, we got both headsets being able to rock and roll. You understand? So we got them being able to do rock and roll. So now we nice, but we can't see our hand. You know, sometimes you must be able to see your hand. Why is it freezing? So sometimes you must be able to see visually see your hands. So how we can do that? We can use controllers. A simple controllers that come with that sample package to actually allow you to be able to track your hands. Uh, let's look for um, where can we find them? I think it's this one. So there is an XR controller left, then there is the right one. So let's take this left and we drag it there and let's take these are already stuff that are created from that package that we downloaded samples so let's save don't forget to save guys you look like a real dev if you don't save your project i'm telling you you are you look like forever so let's see now we are here you could see my hand we could see all this kind of stuff so for our project, we're not going to need this red light that you see. We don't need it. Uh, we, we need, we, we don't need it. We don't need it. Let's just fix that. So because we don't need it, what we're going to do, we're going to select left hand and right hand. And as you scroll down here, you'll see where it's written X-ray interact. Ne? That's the line. That line, you usually use it if you want to interact with user interface. But at this point in time, on what we're going to do, we're really not going to do much of that, you know. So what we can do, we can remove this component and remove the line render, which makes that, uh, that actually through that line for you to see it that way. Uh, it's telling me a lot of stuff. So... We need to remove this as a component as well so that we can remove that and then remove this shooting. So we good. We have removed that. We just saved. We nice. We coming nice. We coming very, 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 very verified. So now we can walk. We need the ability for us to walk. So what we're gonna do now, we gonna have to set a ground floor not a ground floor man <laughs> a floor that we're going to be able to walk on so let's go to 3d and then we choose plane right so this plane we can make it big uh, such as uh five meters so you see when you click here it's able to go proportionally so you just have to make sure that if you want stuff to go proportionally you must activate this part if you don't then you don't have to activate that so we have added the plane. Now we need the ability to move, right? So there's two ways that you're gonna be able to move in, in a virtual reality experience. There's a continuous move, which I usually like when I'm building um, my world because I can quickly be able to move around to the world fast. And there is also what you call a teleport, which is usually recommended. Uh, teleportation, which is usually recommended if you are building your app to make sure that your first default move is teleportation because teleportation it makes it easy for people who are coming to virtual reality for the first time not to have motion sickness so that we could always do teleportation at a later stage but for now we're going to set up a continuous movement because i need it to be able to go through this project much quicker so for us to start setting up that we need to add what we call a component the script that comes with all the stuff that we installed a script called locomotion system so a locomotion system it's responsible for allowing us to be able to move locomotion it's a system of movement basically so now you can drag you see there it's asking for XR origin now you can drag that one in there. So we nice, but we do did say that we need continuous movement provider. Make sure it's action based because we are using the new 
input systems that are action based. So now we have that continuous movement provider installed. We need to at least move that locomotion system to fit there. Then it's asking what's the move speed. I've came to realize, especially for me, three, it's nice. But for a first time person, that three could make them really, really, really sick. Uh, enable strife. Uh, basically, it's ability for you to move sideways. Enable fly. We don't need flying. We want to look at uh, tissue to swag. Uh, enable gravity. Of course, if you fall down, you must go down. And then gravity application mode. When should it apply the gravity? When you are attempting to move or it must happen instantly? Chief, it must happen immediately. You understand? Now it's asking for a forward source. What is a forward source? Forward source needs to be in the direction of your camera. Where you are looking at, then the, 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 your virtual self must go that direction. So we are putting it here, here. And then what do we have? Left hand move action, right hand move action. So here you're basically telling it which hand do you want to actually have an access to that. So I will choose right hand. I usually like to uh, wait. No, I'll choose left. My preference, I usually like to move continuously on my left hand and turn around with my right hand, you know. That's what I prefer. So let's go for move. And I look for left hand locomotion move that is connected. So, but we need something. We need what you call character controller, which is gonna control your uh, your character and be able to allow it to fall. And as you also going on a slope, it understand the slope that you are stepping on. It understand the steps and all this kind of stuff. So, a character controller it's quite important for you to have. So let's put it at 0 0.2, maybe the height. Uh, I usually go for 0 0.1 so that we could always go in other spaces without, um, you know, collider. I mean, that's the radius. If we make it big, probably it may not be nice for you to move around because you might have uh, edges that are close to one another. So you would want it to be that uh, small so that you can always pass through. Uh, height, uh, let's just put it the normal one, 1.6. And then we add this character controller driver, uh, which will connect your continuous movement provider to the character controller. So with this, we should be able to move. We should be able to move. Oh, you know, you're not gonna see if we are moving, but we are moving. I think the best thing to for you to see that we are moving is to actually add an object. You know, if we can just add an object that we can move towards to, then you would understand that we are moving. So let's have this giant cube here. Let's add this giant cube here. Yeah, and then we place it that far. Right, so at least you'll see as we move towards it that we are actually moving. So let's test it again. Where is that cube? Now I'm telling with my entire head. And <laughs> as I'm trying to turn, uh you might hear my first feeling because i'm a bit far from the microphone but you're gonna solve the thing with my right hand so that i don't have to turn my head but you could see we are moving now we good we good you should be excited that we are moving so let's then do one more last thing uh which is the ability for us to be able to to turn around so now we're gonna add what we call this is what we call we call snap 10 provider and then we add that locomotion here so this thing is gonna allow this component is gonna allow us to be able to turn and look around without actually moving 
my head you understand so now that's why we have to bring it so click here you're looking for snap tail aha uh -huh. all right now we good we good to go we got our snap tail involved and all this kind of stuff so let's play and see uh -huh. You see, as I control my right hand, uh, I'm not actually moving my head now. You know, when I'm doing this, wait, where is the cube? I don't see the cube anymore. Uh, wait, did we have that cube here? Okay. That cube probably we added on a game mode. So sometimes when you add something on a game mode, it, it doesn't get saved. So let's add a couple of cubes so that you guys can see that I'm moving my head. That's cube one. So this one maybe make it different and then on the other side we'll add just this sphere let's add sphere and we replace the sphere here and then probably let's add a cylinder this is just generally for you to be able to see um, if we are turning in all the right side of stuff. So we have our cylinder here. So let's play it again. So now you got a cube there. I mean, what's that? Yeah, the cube that we turned in different side. So now we've got our cylinder. Ah, this world is already beautiful. I actually like worlds that you have stuff that are bigger than was the that are bigger than the um, that are bigger than life you know so now you could see the cube you could see the sphere we can also move uh towards that sphere but you'll see that sphere it's out of our thing if we move through here we probably gonna fall you know we are falling so but another thing that we have to fix now since when we are falling Another thing that we have to fix, I really don't like this hands. I want to use uh, this controllers. I want to use the hands that I used at, um, at, at this thing. It's out of this world on our first episode on this world. It's out of this world. So I want to use the hands that I used them. And they are coming from Willem Tutorial. So we, in the next chapter, we are changing our hands to those hands. So let's do that. We're gonna be making this controllers to be much, you know, something that is good, something that is beautiful, and all this kind of stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna do, if you check Willem tutorial, uh, please check him out. Uh, he does cool uh, VR stuff. So the first thing he shared this package, and I'm gonna be now copying this package to my project. I'm gonna use its hands. Uh, as part of the project as he teaches in one of the chapters on how to actually set up the heads. So I'm importing it into the project. I'm importing it to the project. So we want um, the hands to actually be able to move uh, accordingly with this, uh, with, the, with the controls and all this kind of stuff. We are not hands controlling. Probably you could have went for hands controlling <laughs> and remove the frame. But anyway, we are not doing hands controller yet. We are just using the control of the headset. So what we firstly we're gonna need for me to show you what it's inside here. We can go to Oculus hands prefab and wait. 
Uh, we can go here, left hand, assist, and then right hand. There, let's check if they do have color. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are good. Let's test this. Now you could see the hands. I hope you could see the hands because I'm not seeing. Now you could see the hands. They are sitting there. Oh, 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 oh. You understand. So now we have the presence of the hands on a project. Um, when I do fist, it's when I'm pressing clip. And then when I'm pressing trigger, it gives you this, you know. So now, since when we have hands, we can remove this or we can change this hands uh, into the robotic hands that I'm looking for. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that. Let's remove um, these controllers. We don't need them. So now we need the Terminator hand because them the Terminator hand. We need this hand. We want to be able to use this hand. Look how beautiful is this Terminator hand. So for us to be able to use that, we need to be able to copy the um, animations that are coming from the left hand from the prefab and we copy some of its components like stuff like um animate hand on input that this script that you wrote we need to be copying it to this hands so let's quickly do this and take the prefabs left hand of the terminator we can put it there and then right hand of the terminator we can put it here and then we come here and copy this component and we paste it here into right terminator's hand but we need to change the hand and meter here and then we put this one uh right terminator animator so we do the same here we copy this component copy the component and then we paste the component here right so now we have both um oh no 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 we need to move this animator here so that it can't be able to do that but now what we need we need the ability to actually be able to uh, have that animation or even have the animation controller to use that so the way to get that it would be through where is this i'm looking for the animation so we can be copying this i did this thing yeah so now we can just copy this one of the left hand animator and rename it uh, terminator animator <laughs> i like that right so now we got this one we can double click and open what we're looking for it's blend 3 which is a collection of uh, those animation that we are looking for so if you click it will then show you how these animations are blending from one another to the next but we what we are actually looking for now is this ability for us to change the terminator animator you see now they've already have the hands of the past hands we need to put our new hands stuff towards there so where it's written uh where it's written take zero one we need to put uh a major open hand right where it's written pinch we need to look for 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 let me see hey my dog then we need to look for pinch and put it here and then where it's written fire gun our left fist we need to put the fire gun here 
and then where it's written the feast, we need to put the feast. So that would allow our animation to be able to change accordingly. Accordingly, it would allow it to change it the same way like how we did with the other hand. So now what we could do, we can then move this Terminator animator here. Then we do the same for this one because these hands are coming from the same roots. So now we good, it's supposed to work. <coughs> Yeah, it does work. It does work. So we can delete the other one. We can delete the other one. Let's delete the other one. Let's delete the standard hands. So let's remove that and delete it. And we are left with left hand terminator. We can then test it. So now we got seven. So it's working. We're happy with that. But this hands they really look that good. Look at that. They really look that nice. Thank you, Film Tutorials. So now we're nice with that one. We've setting up of the hands. I'm marking it down here. So what we now need is to have our gallery working. So now we're gonna about to import our gallery into this project. The one that I showed you when we were starting. Let me remove this file so that we only have this file here. Let's move it somewhere here. So now we're gonna be setting up uh, that gallery to make sure that it's able to work inside Unity and stuff like that. Usually the first thing that I would do would go to uh, this game, uh, the file that we got, because we got it from Sketchfab. So they already give you the textures that you need, but now we need to extract materials to fill this. Now we extract the material where we're going to save the material. We can make a new folder called materials and select this folder. And inside this folder, we're going to have all our materials there, right, or safe. Then we have all our materials for these projects there. So then we can move these projects to our space. Okay, actually, our space seems like it was bigger than this thing. We, we don't need this thing anymore. The cube and the cylinder, we don't need it. We want to go to the new color but if i play this project now if already you can see this is where the lead is you will see what happens if i play this project now this is what's gonna happen you see i'm dropping down the floor ah. i'm going down the floor why is the reason why i'm fully is because this project as it looks now it doesn't have our coordinators for you to be able to step onto something you know so we need colliders the reason why currently you're not fully <laughs> down is because god has made colliders you know on top of where you're working so think about that way if you're touching on the ground just know that uh there's a collider there uh, that's why you're not falling down, you know. So now we need to start making that ground. Uh, let's just put ground is this one here. So let's put collider to it. Um, so we could say I prefer mesh collider because they possess the shape of that particular mesh, you know. And then floor, what we need is a floor, a trial. So let's do mesh. Let's test it and see if we don't fall. See if we don't fall. Now we don't fall. <laughs> it's like a magic. Now we don't fall We're inside our gallery and stuff like that. But I wanna show you something. 
if eight waiting for the headsets to turn on if i move here i just move through the wall like that and you know in real life that's not possible for one to be able to move through the wall just like that and here i'm also falling so we also need to add colliders that people do not fall and stuff like that so let's do that let's do that uh we're gonna let's start first with the wall and the wall we put mesh collider right and then we want the class that is clear we put mesh collider um what else do we is window oh there's a wall and class there's window probably the stand those poles next to the window we put mesh collider what else ground interior so stuff like the chair we can't go through the chair let's put a mesh collider on that chair and together because they put it together on they put the entire interior details together into one mesh so a tree we can go through the tree so let's put the mesh collider to it so the leaves now we're not gonna get the uh the class it really doesn't matter and then we good ceiling we don't have to because we're not gonna go through that ceiling but let's play and see We can go through that. We can go through that. We can fall down. All right. So we are nice. We are nice. You see, that's the character control. It's able to adapt towards any surface that I'm working on. So I think we are nice now. Let's start to make those trees, those leaves look beautiful. And also start to make the whole building to look beautiful and start putting stuff on this building. So this is the beautification of this gallery. So let's do that. So leaders, let's make this thing beautiful. Let's make uh, this thing to make sense. Let's make these leaves to look more natural. So for you to do that, you must look for the material that we use for, for the trees. And that material is LM leaf trees because, yeah, it's written like that. So I think first, let's do alpha. Yeah, alpha clipping so that it removes all the background. So we have our trees looking like that. They are very nice. So we're done with the trees. But now we have the class. We want the class to look greener. You know, the class needs to look greener. Uh, this is crazy. Don't be everything needs to look positive and cleaner on the other side. So let's rather do material. Um, I want to check what do they have here in terms of the class. Um, no material so let's create where is it it's this one and then we call it class material and look for the class it's here and then we apply this material where is this class material there and now they look all whitish so what we could do we could always try to match the colors you know so now we have our class looking there but probably we could make it uh, let's see dark uh, green so we could so this comes with 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 the textures that they've already provided so really nothing that can be done so this we good with this we happy with that so as it looks now it's it's actually done but what we need to create we need to create um panels now on the wall 
actually i wonder if the sky box we probably need to change the sky box from the default so let me write it down we need to add the panels on the wall and then we need to after adding the panels on the wall we need to import uh, pictures pictures and videos so i'm probably gonna do something i don't know if it's right or what i'm probably gonna screenshot some pictures from tc2 here because if i have to wait for tc2 it will take 265,000 days for it to arrive so i'm probably gonna have to uh take some of the images that i like uh that i'm gonna uh, be able to use try probably to emulate his gallery that he already created here um so yeah that's what i'm gonna do now so we get the ad panels import pictures and then once those things and videos and once those things are done then we can uh, start adding the sky box we'll go and look for the sky box right and then once that is done then we can start with the process of baking the lights to ensure that this really looks nice at the end of the day oh no so let's do that let's do that let's do that so usually how i would create a panel uh, for gallery stuff like this i usually make a cube right I'm going to make a cube. Where is the cube? And let's move this cube by not allowing my shortcuts. So I'm going to make this cube and I'm going to make it this way so that it's small, both sides. Right? Usually, this is just art um, comes with with they are usually four corner it's usually a four corner kind of like uh stuff so we're gonna have this this one probably we can place three so what i'm thinking is i wanna put one actually where do we start where do we start where do we want the user to start right so i want the user wait i want the user to start from this corner so what i'm gonna do with this panel i'm gonna create a panel um that's uh of uh i'm gonna create a panel let's call it panel one this panel one will be on this side like this maybe i could just make this thing a little bit thinner so let me make it a little bit thinner like this right and then i move it nicely there so now we have this so what I have on my mind right now, it's because I saw this it has a couple of uh, nice videos. Maybe let's make it this to fill the wall. So what I have in mind, it's basically I have this as a frame of the picture and then move this the other side and have another frame of the picture. And then here in the middle, look for this to um this is a shot and then we put the video in the middle so it's gonna look somewhere like this you know Ay! Ay, yeah it's too much it's gonna look something along this way actually let me keep it this way uh, yeah yeah so yeah so that's what we gonna be doing for the entire entire thing i think this part of me placing this thing because there are so many of them i'm gonna probably time them elapse it 
uh, what do you call time make the time to run faster so guys please just check what i'm about to do you're gonna enjoy music i'm probably gonna put these things all over and do that before i put pictures then i'll update you actually before i do that this is what's gonna happen so we have this as the frame as the back frame at the actual as the base of the frame but we need a quad maybe let me just import a quad a quad will then be facing will be will then be the one that carries the picture or the art from dc2 so now we'll have this quad being the one that carries that art from dc2 so this will place it just on top of this uh, usually i would make it a little bit smaller than the frame or maybe equals to the frame so basically that's what's gonna happen so in the next couple of minutes you guys will be looking for when I'm, as i'm setting up this thing so for me i'll stop taking then i'll continue to do this as you enjoy the beautiful music Uh, leaders we now nice we now nice have uh, already placed the wireframe on how we aim to actually put this artwork on the wall i mean even if i could leave it this way this is award winning gallery gallery of 50 clay of shades you understand it's already making the moves as it looks so i'm gonna jump in into vr to actually check how does it look like but we done then the next step it's us importing the pictures now there's it's another long stages because we're gonna have to look through this man's catalog and try to find what we like so yeah this it's how it looks it's already looking so beautiful it's already oh now i could see other things are flying so i just have to fix you see this is not sitting nicely on that i just have to fix such and even here this it's not fitting nicely with that so sometimes it always helps guys when you are building on the pc for you to come into vr and check what is actually uh, happening here so now i'm gonna fix all those things but i love how it's sitting i really love it i really love it i just have to fix those things but i really love this you'll see the video when it plays there ah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be too much i'm probably gonna start first with the pictures and then and then from there um i then make videos because that will be another step that I have to explain. I have to save the video from Instagram in a way that probably it may not be allowed, but we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna get tea. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do this. Let's fix that. 
So we saw a couple of stuff are not sitting well. So we're gonna be fixing uh, those stuff now. So let me start where we gonna where we gonna start it from. I don't know if I should start at the center or what, but because it's also looking beautiful if you you starting it from. Yeah, let's just just have to make sure that. It's sitting nicely on top. It's sitting nicely on top. So guys, it's another long video because I have to save all this. Let me put it on fast forward later. leaders so now i'm importing the entire uh, files that i've uh, got it here there are so many pictures here so i'm gonna die by all means to uh, get through this project so firstly i'm gonna start with section one so we select the quad there is another way of actually stealing from this thing one of the ways is to uh, take whatever texture that you have and you move it uh, accordingly to that picture then it will automatically create the material uh, so from here I usually for the pictures I usually go for unlit so that you could see that brightness the picture as it is it's not affected by light so we have that then let's go for picture 2 cut 2 and let's put this one here right and remember to do uh, universal render pipeline and unlead then we would have that picture there remember the one in the middle is for video purposes so that's why i'm skipping it through then we uh do this and we drag this image here remember not to forget to keep it unlit in face our render pipeline unlit and we do the same to this image we drag it here it goes to render wait 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 render pipeline unlit so we're done with this section it's already looking all nice and all this kind of stuff so now we're gonna come to this section section two i've selected the pictures uh, name at section two these are the images that are going for section two so quad oh wait why am i in section one let's go for section two right this is section two let's drag uh wait section two 
plus track that image there like universal render or lead and then come to this one picture d uh, then we drag this image here then what do we do we make it a lead where is the button for a lead the button for a lead is here and then we go for this picture we drag this button and then we click uh, universal render pipeline and we click a lead and then we come to this one then we drag the last image uh, select this uh, wait not here but we universal render pipeline and click a lead so now we done with section two we are going for section three let's go for section three so already looking all nice let's go for uh section three uh it's this picture drag this one and click here and go to a lead and then come to this one drag it here and the universal render pipeline click and lead right and we come to this picture frame drag this one here and make it uh, a lead then we do this for this one as well we drag it there and we make it a lead so we done with section three so with section four i, I didn't do much edit actually on these pictures i took them as from instagram so that we can quickly be able to have it here as they are so on this one section four i aim to make it more personal and more focusing on the actual artist itself so now we're gonna come here and look for the picture of the legend himself put this into there and go universal render pipeline and lead look for another picture of uh, of the this one i liked uh the way and when they did uh the first i think that was his first um uh, gallery exhibition showcasing all this kind of stuff so i usually like that picture so now we coming to uh put another picture here uh -huh. right so now we could have the last one where he's engaging with uh, his attendance uh, participant people who came and look for his work so we we nice we nice we nice it's starting to be colorful happy this artwork from this it is very 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 colorful so started to get way colorful so let's do section five let's do section five we go in for section five section five move this picture here to create the material automatically move this oh we know not the video uh where is the quad move this picture here to create that oh wait i forgot to select a lead on this one thank you for reminding me guys that we need to go to a lead with this one we also need to go uh, for universal render a lead and we come into this one drag this one here and then universal render pipeline and lead and then we come to this one and we drag this one here uh, universal render pipeline and we place it a lead Whew. 
almost there almost there almost there so now we have this one's quad it's section six ah section six is not done so we'll have to go and look for another picture laziness was kicking in while i'm saving the pictures so we drag this one here and we put it to unlit and we drag this one here oh i know which picture that we're gonna put there <laughs> and then we click it unlit and then we drag uh this picture in and then we click a lead i think i see the picture of the car wait there's no picture of the car here okay let's quickly do that i love this picture I love, 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 love this picture. Where is Unity? So Unity is here. And then we drag it here and this. And we move over Universal Render Pipeline and we make it a lead. So now we're done with um, inputting all the pictures. Um, we can quickly test it. How does it look like? And then the next part, it's now creating the videos to play on the video panel. So that's it's also going to be interesting because you're going to learn how to import the video and stuff like that. So let's play. Yo. Ah oh, la la. Yes, yes, it starts to feel like an actual gallery. Ah, oh, nice. Oh la la. Hey, T man, I just made a gallery of yours. Yeah, every time you only have a new image, let me know, my king, so that I can have your personal visual gallery. Yes, yes. Look at that. Oh, lo, lo. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of my favorite art. I think this is the earliest, earliest version of them all. The initial inception art. Ah, this thing it's nice now. We now gonna go to a next chapter where we put on the video on the walls and the video will play automatically and it's gonna be way nice. God damn, I love it. Ah, leaders, we found our eight videos, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, create a folder here uh, for those eight videos um and then i'm gonna copy them across in here i'm gonna just drag them across so we want gonna try to make sure that we maintain the same aspect ratio of instagram it's usually uh 1080 by 980 uh portrait so now for you to play video inside um unity you're gonna need what you call a video player so what i'm gonna do in each um in each where we are playing the video uh in each quad that we are playing the video i'm gonna rename them as i'm gonna all add a video player on them so that so i'm trying to look for them all at once so that i don't have to uh, copy and paste 
so I don't have to repeat it again. I want to edit one time video player on them as a component. So each will have its own component of a video player. So I think, let me just make sure that I selected all of them. Yeah, by the looks of things, it seems like I selected all of them. So I'm gonna do this and look for video player as a component. So each one of it will have the component as a video player. So the next thing you see, it's requiring a video clip and it also looking for what you call a renderer. So probably maybe let's fill the video clips first. I've already just selected the video clips and numbered them from one. So I'm gonna add this one here, look for another, and then drag this one here, and then look for another, drag three here, look for another video clip, drag four there, and look for another video clip and drag five and look for another video clip uh, drag six there and then now look for another uh, video clip which is gonna be seven so let's look for seven and drag it there and look for eight and drag it there right so let's check if we play this will actually appear because i see the render it's already saying uh, that the render it's a quad mesh but there is also what you call render texture uh, that we can use that i was thinking of using but let's quickly test <laughs> i forgot one thing they all have audio and we don't need audio we don't need audio on them we don't need audio on them so what we gonna do we wanna find all of them where is another one and then we change the audio output to none so let's find all of them none uh, another video player here and change the audio to none but at least you now we show it plays but i usually prefer the way i'm gonna show you the other way where we are using a render texture um i'm so used to using render texture than compared to the actual mesh of the actual mesh so i would go for render texture so let's quickly remove remove let's make sure that this cut wait this cut it's none this video cut it's none this it's none as well this it's none 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 okay let's try it again so now it's using the mesh render to actually render the video yes you could see it it's playing ah nice oh no, no. <laughs> it's actually making ah nice so all these videos are playing and they're gonna be looping around and all those kind of stuff i'm loving it nice no so the idea of the video is to actually look behind the scene when this man is creating this stuff it's looking all nice it's looking all nice uh, this one has stopped it means it's gonna play again yep so it's looking all nice where you could see they are oh, they're not looped i'm gonna set them to loop so that they can continuously play and all this kind of stuff so let's quickly do that and i think 
that would also give us a chance to use render textures as well uh, so that we can instead of using a mesh we can work on a render texture uh, video video quad right so now that's good so render texture is basically going to give us another another lot of hard work um because you're gonna have to create eight of them and then we place eight of them there and then we create materials eight materials for the videos so it's a lot of procedures but it's really smooth and more clear um let's see render textures render textures rt and what we're gonna do we're gonna create one render texture let's go to create go for create uh, render texture here and rename it as rt1 why does it go for two let's rename it as rt1 and then what we're gonna do here the size we're gonna put it 1080 uh, by 1920 so that it knows that it's portrait once we have that size, now we're gonna duplicate up until we get to, uh, I think this is eight. So now we can just rename two, uh, rename this one to three, rename this one to three, rename this one to four, and then rename this one to, five rename this one to six and then rename this one to seven and then the last one being eight right so we could either do how we did it with the textures we could because if it's like this, now we could go to this quad. Let's start with the first quad. Uh, we could just go and drag this so that it creates us a material um, automatically for that, for that RT1. And then let's keep the material universal and lit. So we could, so now we have it there. And now we can also drag it. Wait. We can now change the material rider uh, override to texture and drag this texture here. So that one understand we are using this material now, but we are using RT1 and RT1 connects there. One tool. So now we're going to repeat the same thing here. Uh, render texture, render texture 2 right and then we drag this texture here so that it give us that uh, material for that and we go to universal render and lit so i'm gonna repeat this process up until we get to the eight one so in this part i will just quickly do it and then i will make this one run fast Here we go guys here we go we are now done look how clear is that they are all looked we can be able to yes they are so clear i really like these video panels they are fitting perfectly ah nice 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 really loving this really loving this we nice we nice all of them are playing and they are clear so you can basically come here and look at the video uh, behind the scenes of what this is capable of doing and also at the same time enjoy his work of art 
So now we are nice with this part. We're gonna now start to add other stuff to start finishing off. So one of the things that I wanna make, uh, I like to have a sky box so that we set the mood nicely. Um, so now we're gonna add a sky box. So let's go for package manager. There's a sky box that is within my asset that I usually use. I like it, it's so beautiful. Because we want to make it like a late afternoon or, you know, when it's all relaxed and dead. So that's what I'm thinking to do. Sky, let me see, is this one's? Yeah, I think it's this one's uh, that I usually get to use. So import. We add the sky box and then after the sky box, we basically want to do another tough task, uh, which is called the ability for us to bake the light so that it looks way beautiful and smooth. And usually this is a good practice, especially if you are using a mobile quest to have your lights being baked and all this time. At this point in time, these lights are real time. Uh, so would want them to be baked, you know, so that it doesn't actually have to use its power to render the real time lights. So where is that? My box for, for big. Uh, you guys must always uh, check box for big sky box cube extender. So now we need to switch on light. And then we go to the environment and then we look for the one that we want. Just click here. Mm, I think its name is, let's check this one. Um, external blind, no, this is the day version. Hmm. I don't know what I think about day, but the one that I usually go for is this one. It, it's so beautiful. It looks endless, but maybe let's go for a day for this one. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for a day. Let's test this one. Yep. It feels different now. The mood is different because of what we just been able to put. The skybox will change the mood. It feels a little bit overcast as if there's some bit of rain or heavy storm that is coming. You can still look at that thing. Let's go for the other one. The one that I wanted because it really looks nice, that one to make it look like a little bit it's that time of the night let's go for this one yeah it makes the mood way different yeah i really like this one but you see now my trees are not popping i think we're gonna go for the day one so that everything be able to pop here but guys, this is a decision that you as the designer, you always have to switch in and check which one actually is more alive. So now we're going to bake the lights in. So for us to bake the lights in, they usually require you to make sure that this game object that we are making, this game object that we are using, uh, when you go to models, always make sure that it can generate UVs, light map UVs, and you apply. And once that thing is done, because this is the only game object that we imported from, from a third party, so we must make sure that it generates the light UV maps, and afterwards we're going to put static on it. And we then gonna bake and see how does it look. Are we gonna need a couple of lights inside or not, you know? So now I'm waiting for it to actually 
apply this as i told you guys once we get like big time mantu is relaxed <laughs> so yeah so what i'm thinking about this video i'm basically gonna put chapters 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 when i edit so that you guys could just have one video that you can be able to watch these chapters or actual i don't know should i put it like as one video that you guys can watch and then you skip it to the next maybe i should put it that way as all videos that you guys can navigate or as one video hmm very tricky very tricky i will see you guys will let me know you prefer it as one video or you prefer as one video that finishes then you can go to another video but it forms part of the entire experience so now we have applied for that we need to come to this building this and we make sure we mark it as static because actually let's put everything here underneath this vr and then we mark this thing as static and then once that thing is done then we can't be able to to start it has made everything underneath it static then we can be able to bake so let's come to the bake let's create a new baking settings um usually i go with baked indirect uh progressive gpu you must choose the gpu because i got the graphic cards here um we could i think we could push it and make sure i usually bake with bakery but for the sake of this i'm gonna try this one just to make sure that you guys can still use it because bakery it's a it's a paid it's a paid what's that it's a paid plugin so i thought like maybe let's just do with non-paid plugin but at this point in time i think i can take a screenshot because i really like what i see at this point in time let me just take a screenshot nice nice 101 all right let's generate this lighting it may take some time so probably we may pause this video here and wait until let me see oh, it seems like it's running fast let's actually usually when you have a lot of stuff into the project it usually takes a long time to do uh just a simple baking of lights and all this kind of stuff so but now it seems like wait i didn't there's a problem i didn't do this i didn't come to this slide did i stop should stop i didn't come to this slide and select uh maybe bait i didn't do that so now let's for stop so now we put this slide to bake we have it here and now we can generate the light and see what happens all right uh the baking takes at least three minutes um three minutes and 45 seconds to actually be able to build this i'm actually really loving it look how it can tell that the sun is coming from this direction going that that's why you see it uh lit on the edges here but other areas are in the dark and it also added a bit of blue from the sky box within this area so that it looks dead so let's check if we need something but for now i'm really 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 happy with this let's check if we need anything uh to make it pop you know yeah yes 
So not bad, uh, but I feel like we could add some lights uh, towards the installations themselves. We could put some point lights that we can use towards the installation themselves so that we put that, you know, it should not be this dark. So I think that's what we should be adding there. So let's add those lights and we bake once again. Let's do that. So for us to fix that, we basically, maybe let's create a game option called lights. And then we drag this directional light here, right? And we then create a new set of lights. We call them point light. Here is the point light. It's still far. I think let's drag it up until we can get it here. Yes. So here is the light. So what I'm thinking, I'm thinking it to at least be able to give this poster a bit of light there. Let's see, you know, so let me see if I double it up. All right. And I just want to see if it makes sense. Yeah, it just looks like let's take these two ones and we move them across here. Okay, that's what we could see. Yeah, but that one, it's not. Uh, leaders, uh, in our baking of the lights is another thing. You take 10,000 hours of baking lights, but I think we're nice now. We read it's starting to look all nice. Let's go and check it. I think we're done, we're done, we're done in this chapter, guys. We're done with this chapter. Oh, I like how it looks. <laughs> yes, I like how it looks. It's so nice. Mm, 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 mm. So you could see we're gonna try now to remove those edges that are shiggly. We're gonna try to remove them now using post processing for us to be able to remove that. But happiness, it's what I have now. This is crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm really loving it. I'm really loving it. So what I'm going to do now, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And what I'm going to do now, I'm basically going to put post processing, uh, try to work on those edges, but we actually done. This is the final chapter. I'm loving this thing, guys. I'm telling you, this is beautiful. I hope this also likes this thing when he sees it. So let me do that last part away. Let's do that last part. So usually you would come to uh, activate post processing here. And then for those jacket lines that you see, uh, you can remove them using anti-aliasing. If you just put here, the method that camera uses to smooth the jacket edges, 
So the one that is recommended for VR is the first approximate. Um, uh, okay, first approximate until I see. Uh, I think it's the one that is mostly allowed to for VR projects for you to be able to do it. I just want to check if there's anything that I have to do this side um, to actually be able to smooth it up. Just want to check if there's anything that we have to do. But I think we are, oh wait, wait, let me check. I'll let you know, I'll let you know, guys. I want to make sure that I don't forget anything. So that we can make that to be smooth and all this kind of stuff. Performant. Let's check this. Quality settings, lighting. Can skip that and let's check post processing. Damn, there is this particular settings. Wait, why am I in performant? I'm supposed to be here in balanced. Oh, remember that thing was complained that we must remove screen space ambition occlusion. This is where you must come and remove that thing off so that you can be able to work nicely on uh, Quest headsets. So I'm looking for these settings. I don't know where to find them. I know I will remove. Yes, under quality anti-lazing, you see it's disabled. I uh, put it to four max so that it really removes those edges. Uh, then at this part, you can just add that push processing that we have, just to add a couple of nice visual aesthetic. You see now when we do this, you see how it looks. It's neutral. We put tone mapping. We thought tone mapping looks like this, and then neutral looks like this, and axis looks like this. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I actually want to see this one inside. Then this is for Bloom. Our hands has uh, emission or lights on them. So that Bloom is going to make it pop. And a vignette, uh, vignette it's basically at the edges here. You see, if I increase it like this, you see, at the edges, it will make it more, more black. And it's like those, let's make it rounded. Let's make it rounded, you know, so that it fits perfectly with our headsets. So it's going to look like those olden movies and all this kind of stuff. I can't wait to test this. Let's test this. Oh, la la. Yes. yes. Ah, so beautiful. <laughs> Yo, I'm loving this. Oh, guys, I'm really loving this. Yo. Sure, sure, sure. It's monotone, it's relaxed, it's all this kind of stuff. I'm really loving this, guys. Yeah. Thank you for sitting with me up until the last uh, part where we are building an art gallery for my friend. Um, I hope you love what you see here. Um, if you do, please play, press subscribe and make sure that you follow us in the next video that we're going to make. With that being said, thank you so much leaders. Don't forget to press subscribe and like and also comment, leave your comments here. I'm going to share this video with TZO.